So seeing how much you guys loved my previous buying guide video where I talk about what graphics cards to buy, naturally I got to work straight away on another one covering CPUs instead. But then AMD announced that they're releasing the 3300X and the 3100, so I was like, well, okay, I'll just wait until those release. Then they finally released, I got back into making this video, and then Intel announced that the 10th gen series is launching in May. So at that point, I was kind of annoyed, but I was like, okay, I'll just leave it, wait until those release, and then make a video. And wow, They've released, no new CPUs are on the horizon for now, so I'll just make this video and get it out there while I still have time. But enough talking, let's just get into it shall we? Let's start at the very bottom, with the most budget CPUs there are. And in that range there's only one real choice, the Athlon 3000G by AMD. This thing is incredibly cheap, and also combined with the really, really budget A320 motherboards that AMD has to offer, you can make an extremely cheap PC with one of these really easily. Naturally, the performance won't be great, as it's only a two-core, four-thread CPU with integrated graphics, but if you just want to access the internet, or just play some very not-demanding esports titles like League of Legends, for example, as something like 720p, then they are still a great choice. Plus, down the line, you can very easily greatly increase the performance by just buying a dedicated graphics card for it. And at least in gaming, it won't really be bottlenecking you until you really go for a decent mid-tier graphics card. If you still want to stick to an APU though, then the next best thing is the 3200G, also by AMD. It can also run perfectly fine on a really cheap A320 motherboard. It has four cores, which should be enough for a while, and again, if down the line you have some extra money, just go and get a graphics card. And I haven't even mentioned the best thing, and that is that the, both the Athlon 3000G and the 3200G are both overclockable. Which means if you have enough cooling to support it, and a good enough motherboard to support it, which again, a decent A320 should be enough for that, then you could get even more performance out of it. Even with a stock cooler, you could overclock it even just a tiny bit, which is great if you want to squeeze as much performance as possible from your CPU. For another $60 or so, you could also go for the 3400G from AMD. However, that is where things get a bit more complicated, because even though at this point it's turning into a rather decent little APU for productivity, at that point you may as well also go with a more gaming oriented CPU, which is the 9100 from Intel. It's also an APU, which means that it can also process graphics, and if you're just into gaming, it's probably one of the best value chips out there. Now, there is a new generation Intel 10100 coming, which even though it's an awful name, could still be of interest to you. Apart from the issue of the new 10th gen Intel CPUs requiring a new socket, the LGA 1200. However, with the recent release of 10th gen Intel CPUs, you can expect previous generation CPUs and also previous generation LGA 1151 fitted motherboards to go down in price. That's enough APU talk, that's for poor people, am I right? Let's go into budget standalone CPUs that you need a discrete graphics card to run. In the budget range, the clear winner is the Intel 9100F. In price, it's actually really similar to other lower end CPUs like the 3200G and the Athlon 3000G, but will absolutely shred those when it comes to just gaming. However, this is where you start getting into a very interesting dilemma. As with the recently released AMD 3100 and 3300X CPUs, even though the 3100 is about $20 more expensive than the 9100F, you're going to get way better numbers when it comes to any productivity activities, such as editing videos, Photoshop, anything like that really. And the same can be said for the 3300X, which completely destroys even Intel i5s. However, the question here is if you're even going to have a great experience, relatively speaking, doing productivity on such a low-end machine. Because even though, yes, they do perform better than the Intel counterparts, their performance will still not be great. And I wouldn't really recommend doing anything like that until you reach at least the Ryzen 3600. More about it in a second. So, just for pure gaming, Intel seems like a better choice, right? Well, that would be true until you consider two more things. Not only do Intel CPUs usually have more expensive love boards to go along with them, but also you'd need to buy an aftermarket cooler. Because unlike Ryzen CPUs, they don't come with a stock cooler. So even though on paper it may look like a 9100F is less expensive than a 3100 for example, by the time you factor in the cooler and the extra motherboard costs, the price is pretty much even out. So at that point it's really a question of what do you be doing with your PC. If it's for productivity, which again I wouldn't fully recommend, then go 3100. Now it's just gaming and basic all-rounder functionality, 
go with Intel. But if you're looking into productivity, the 3300X is a nice step up from the 3100 if you want to go with that. Now, if you're hoping to hear something about the 10100F, well, sadly, we don't even know if it exists yet or not. But seeing how much of a great value the current 9100F is, it wouldn't surprise me if Intel released it in the future. And wonder how many people are going to call me as being an Intel fanboy, even though I'm not from this video. I'm actually curious. Now, let's move up again, shall we? Because this is where it gets really interesting. If you're still into just gaming, at around $170, you could get yourself an Intel i5 9400F. In gaming, it will demolish everything that AMD has, but then we're approaching upon the greatest value to performance ratio chip of all time, at least according to some people. The legendary Ryzen 3600. Because yeah, pretty much everyone says that and I won't be any different. Because if you have the $200 to spare for a 3600, go with that. No matter what, go with that. It is an amazing value CPU. It will give you similar performance in gaming to lower end Intel offerings, while also completely blowing out even higher end Intel offerings when it comes to productivity and other such tasks. And this is also the range where actually having a budget productivity machine makes sense as these make amazing budget workstations. They completely demolish even higher end Intel CPUs when it comes to productivity benchmarks. So definitely go with a 3600 if you can. Because again, if you value in coolers and motherboards, the 9400F may end up costing you around the same. Now a very interesting CPU here and one that's actually really, really hated apparently in the whole tech enthusiast community is the 3600X. It's slightly more expensive than 3600 and most most people will say it's not really worth buying and I would probably have to agree as the performance improvement you get is really not worth the extra money. So I'll say go for that if you, you know can't really increase the budget any further for like graphics card or something or if there's just really nothing else you could maybe buy for your new PC. So if you have that small amount of money spare then go to 3600X or alternatively use that money to support my channel on Patreon. Link down in the description below of course. Then at almost $100 more than the 3600 you have the 3700X, which is actually the CPU I have in my personal rig. And that has been the optimal choice for many people when you go Virgin Ryzen. It has 8 cores, 16 threads, and has good enough gaming performance for pretty much anything nowadays, especially when bundled with a really good graphics card like my 1080 Ti. Because most people won't need more than 8 cores on their PCs unless they're really doing something that could reuse it. For example, elaborate video editing or other really demanding workloads. Like I edit 4K footage on my 3700X and even I don't have any problems with it. So, so if you could really use that extra performance and extra cores for productivity and gaming, compared to the 3600, then definitely go with that. The 3700X is pretty much the perfect balance in the middle. And in this price range, Intel Pinch has nothing that can be justified unless you just really want a better game performance at a way higher premium. Then if that's really your thing, maybe just go for an i7 or something. And now here we stumble on another rather disliked CPU, and that's the 3800X. Now at first I thought I would just say the same thing about that I said about the 3600X. However, if you're someone who can afford to buy a 3700X, then you can probably justify spending a tiny bit more to get a tiny bit better performance and you don't really need 12 cores. Because for someone who buys a 3600 for example, then that extra $30 or so may not be really something they can do. But if you're buying a 3700X, buying those 30 extra dollars just to upgrade is way more doable. So if you want a tiny bit of extra game performance but don't need 12 or 16 cores, then I would say go 3800X. Now we reach the really high-end stuff, like the 3900X by AMD which you could already buy for rather cheap, but AMD has decided to further cut the prices by, by about $100 as a nice little present for Intel who just released the new 10th gen CPUs, which makes the 3900X even better value than ever before. Like it's almost criminal to sell 12 cores, really efficient cores as well, for such a low price. So when it comes to productivity, Intel has literally nothing to compete with here. And by no means is the 3100X not good in gaming as well. It will absolutely tear through anything when it comes to gaming. And it's really at that point where you reach enough gaming performance that you can say well, that's enough. It's by that point you definitely reach a rate of diminishing returns when it comes to better gaming experience. Especially if you play at higher resolutions like 1440p or 2160p. I mean, let's be honest, if you're playing 4K, then you may as well just go for 3600X. That will be in itself enough. Because that's how GPU bound 
4K gaming is. But if you're really into gaming and you know you won't be doing anything else, then the brand new 10900K from Intel is there if you want it. It performs way better in terms of gaming, productivity, even thermals than its 1900K and 1900K S predecessors. And again, if you want to be bothered with, you know, more expensive motherboards and having to buy aftermarket cooling, then just go with that. But I can only really recommend it if you just do gaming. If you do gaming and anything else, just go AMD. Because with a 3900X, you get two more cores than a 10900K at a way lower price. Then when it comes to the really high-end stuff, well, then Intel doesn't really stand a chance. The 3950X is comparable in gaming performance to things like the 900K S and also the brand new 10900K, but it's also way more expensive than all of them. And unlike previous AMD CPUs, this one doesn't come with a cooler. So that's something you'd have to buy separately just adding to the price further. However, it offers six more cores than a 1900K and four more than a 3900X. So if you really need those extra cores for productivity, then go for it. For gaming, it can be a bit overkill, but we're coming to a point where Intel has pretty much nothing to offer that's competitive. The value proposition for gaming is pretty much gone, and for productivity, it's been gone for a while. But if you need something even more extreme with more than 16 cores, well, Intel still has nothing. Just go with Threadripper 3960X if you need 24 cores, 3970X if you need 32 cores, or if you really needed the 3990X with 64 cores. They all cost you quite a bit, but if you need a performance, it's there. And Intel is completely stomped on by AMD in these extreme price ranges. So there we go, from the budget GPUs to ones that cost several thousand dollars. Now hopefully you know what CPU you should buy. And if you have any more questions, well just comment below or ask me or others in our Discord, which is linked down in the video description below as well. And like I said, down there is also my Patreon. If you want to, you know, help support the channel monetarily, as it does go a long way. Maybe one day I'll be finally able to afford so many CPUs to buy to review them on the channel. That'd be fun, because seeing my channel's growth, I doubt I'll be getting review samples from Intel or AMD anytime soon. And if you like this video and want to see more guides like this, if you want to build your dream PC, then definitely subscribe to the channel. And maybe watch my guide on graphics cards so you know which one is the best to buy. That'll be up in iCards if you want to watch it. And let me know what kind of buying guide or whatever you want me to do next. So I guess that's really it. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.